Hip fracture, Wikipedia audio. A hip fracture is a break that occurs in the upper part of the femur. Symptoms may include pain around the hip particularly with movement and shortening of the leg. Usually the person cannot walk. They most often occur as a result of a fall. Risk factors include osteoporosis taking many medications, alcohol use, and metastatic cancer. Diagnosis is generally by X-rays. Magnetic resonance imaging, a CT scan, or a bone scan may occasionally be required to make the diagnosis. Pain management may occur with opioids or a nerve block. If a person's health is sufficient, surgery is generally recommended within two days. Options for surgery may include a total hip replacement or screws. Efforts to prevent deep vein thrombosis following surgery are recommended. Signs and Symptoms About 15% of women break their hip at some point in their life. Women are more often affected than men. Hip fractures become more common with age. The risk of death in the year following a fracture is about 20% in older people. The classic clinical presentation of a hip fracture is an elderly patient who sustained a low-energy fall and now has groin pain and is unable to bear weight. Pain may be referred to the supracondylar knee. On examination, the affected extremity is often shortened and unnaturally externally rotated compared to the unaffected leg. Osteoporosis, homocysteine, a toxic natural amino acid linked to the cause of heart disease, other metabolic bone diseases such as Paget's disease, osteomalacia, osteopetrosis, and osteogenesis imperfecta. Stress fractures may occur in the hip region with metabolic bone disease, Benign or malignant primary bone tumors are rare causes of hip fractures. Metastatic cancer deposits in the proximal femur may weaken the bone and cause a pathological hip fracture. Infection in the bone is a rare cause of hip fracture. Smoking. Hip fracture following a fall is likely to be a pathological fracture. The most common causes of weakness in bone are the hip joint, an enarthrodial joint, can be described as a ball and socket joint. The femur connects at the acetabulum of the pelvis and projects laterally before angling medially and inferiorly to form the knee. Although this joint has three degrees of freedom, it is still stable due to the interaction of ligaments and cartilage. The labrum lines the circumference of the acetabulum to provide stability and shock absorption. Articular cartilage covers the concave area of acetabulum, providing more stability and shock absorption. Surrounding the entire joint itself is a capsule secured by the tendon of the psoas muscle and three ligaments. The iliofemoral, or Y. Ligament is located anteriorly and serves to prevent hip hyperextension. The pubofemoral ligament is located anteriorly just underneath the iliofemoral ligament and serves primarily to resist abduction, extension, and some external rotation. Finally the ischiofemoral ligament on the posterior side of the capsule resists extension, adduction, and internal rotation. When considering the biomechanics of hip fractures, it is important to examine the mechanical loads the hip experiences during low-energy falls. The hip joint is unique in that it experiences combined mechanical loads. An axial load along the shaft of the femur results in compressive stress. Bending load at the neck of the femur causes tensile stress along the upper part of the neck and compressive stress along the lower part of the neck. While osteoarthritis and osteoporosis are associated with bone fracture as we age, these diseases are not the cause of the fracture alone. Low energy falls from standing are responsible for the majority of fractures in the elderly, 
but fall direction is also a key factor. Elderly tend to fall to the side as instead of forward, and the lateral hip and strikes the ground first. During a sideways fall, the chances of hip fracture see a 15-fold and 12-fold increase in elderly males and females, respectively. Elderly individuals are also predisposed to hip fractures due to many factors that can compromise proprioception and balance, including medications, vertigo, stroke, and peripheral neuropathy. Displaced fractures of the trochanter or femoral neck will typically cause external rotation and shortening of the leg when the patient is laying supine. Typically, radiographs are taken of the hip from the front and side. Frog leg views are to be avoided, as they may cause severe pain and further displace the fracture. In situations where a hip fracture is suspected but not obvious on X-ray, an MRI is the next test of choice. If an MRI is not available or the patient cannot be placed into the scanner a CT may be used as a substitute. MRI sensitivity for radiographically occult fracture is greater than CT. Bone scan is another useful alternative however substantial drawbacks include decreased sensitivity, early false negative results, and decreased conspicuity of findings due to age-related metabolic changes in the elderly. As the patients most often require an operation, Full preoperative general investigation is required. This would normally include blood tests, ECG, and chest X ray. Risk factors X rays of the affected hip usually make the diagnosis obvious. AP and lateral views should be obtained. Trochanteric fractures are subdivided into either intertrochanteric or pertrochanteric by the Muller AO classification of fractures. Practically, the difference between these types is minor. The terms are often used synonymously. An isolated trochanteric fracture involves one of the trochanters without going through the anatomical axis of the femur and may occur in young individuals due to forceful muscle contraction. Yet, an isolated trochanteric fracture may not be regarded as a true hip fracture because it is not cross-sectional. The majority of hip fractures are the result of a fall, particularly in the elderly. Therefore, identifying why the fall occurred, and implementing treatments or changes, is key to reducing the occurrence of hip fractures. Multiple contributing factors are often identified. These can include environmental factors and medical factors. A recent study has identified a high incidence of undiagnosed cervical spondylotic myelopathy amongst patients with a hip fracture. This is relatively unrecognized consequent of CSM. Additionally, there is some evidence to systems designed to offer protection in the case of a fall. Hip protectors, for example appear to decrease the number of hip fractures among the elderly. They, however, are not often used. Most hip fractures are treated surgically by implanting an orthosis. Surgical treatment outweighs the risks of non-surgical treatment which requires extensive bed rest. Prolonged immobilization increases risk of thromboembolism, pneumonia, deconditioning, and decubitus ulcers. Regardless, the surgery is a major stress, particularly in the elderly. Pain is also significant, and can also result in immobilization so patients are encouraged to become mobile as soon as possible, often with the assistance of physical therapy. Skeletal traction pending surgery is not supported by the evidence. Regional nerve blocks are useful for pain management in hip fractures. Surgery can be performed under general anesthesia or with neuraxial techniques, choices based on surgical and patient factors, 
as outcomes such as mortality and post-procedure complications including pneumonia, MI, stroke, or confusion, are not affected by anesthetic technique. Red blood cell transfusion is common for people undergoing hip fracture surgery due to the blood loss sustained during surgery and from the injury. Adverse effects of blood transfusion may occur and are avoided by restrictive use of blood transfusion rather than liberal use. Restrictive blood transfusion is based on symptoms of anemia and thresholds lower than the 10G-DL hemoglobin used for liberal blood transfusion. If operative treatment is refused or the risks of surgery are considered to be too high the main emphasis of treatment is on pain relief. Skeletal traction may be considered for long-term treatment. Aggressive chest physiotherapy is needed to reduce the risk of pneumonia and skilled rehabilitation and nursing to avoid pressure sores and DVT slash pulmonary embolism most people will be bed bound for several months. Non-operative treatment is now limited to only the most medically unstable or demented patients, or those who are non-ambulatory at baseline with minimal pain during transfers. Mechanism Functional anatomy For low-grade fractures, standard treatment is fixation of the fracture in situ with screws or a sliding screw-slash-plate device. This treatment can also be offered for displaced fractures after the fracture has been reduced. Biomechanics Neurological factors Diagnosis Physical exam Imaging Fractures managed by closed reduction can possibly be treated by percutaneously inserted screws. In elderly patients with displaced or intracapsular fractures many surgeons prefer to undertake a hemiarthroplasty, replacing the broken part of the bone with a metal implant. The advantage is that the patient can mobilize without having to wait for healing. In elderly patients who are medically well and still active, a total hip replacement may be indicated. Types Traction is contraindicated in femoral neck fractures due to it affecting blood flow to the head of the femur. A trochanteric fracture, below the neck of the femur, has a good chance of healing. Closed reduction may not be satisfactory and open reduction then becomes necessary. The use of open reduction has been reported as 8 to 13 percent among pertrochanteric fractures, and 52% among intertrochanteric fractures. Both intertrochanteric and pertrochanteric fractures may be treated by a dynamic hip screw and plate, or an intramedullary rod. The fracture typically takes 3-6 months to heal. As it is only common in elderly, removal of the dynamic hip screw is usually not recommended to avoid unnecessary risk of second operation and the increased risk of refracture after implant removal. The most common cause for hip fractures in the elderly is osteoporosis, if this is the case, treatment of the osteoporosis can well reduce the risk of further fracture. Only young patients tend to consider having it removed. The implant may function as a stress riser, increasing the risk of a break if another accident occurs. Subtrochanteric fractures may be treated with an intramedullary nail or a screw plate construction and may require traction preoperatively, though this practice is uncommon. It is unclear if any specific type of nail results in different outcomes than any other type of nail. Rehabilitation has been proven to increase daily functional status. It is unclear if the use of anabolic steroids affects recovery. There is not enough evidence to ascertain what are the best strategies to promote walking after hip fracture surgery. Prevention 
Oral supplements with non-protein energy, protein, vitamins, and minerals started before or early after surgery may prevent complications during the first year after hip fracture in aged adults, without seemingly effects on mortality. Nonunion, failure of the fracture to heal, is common in fractures of the neck of the femur, but much more rare with other types of hip fracture. A vascular necrosis of the femoral head occurs frequently in intracapsular hip fractures, because the blood supply is interrupted. Management Malunion, healing of the fracture in a distorted position, is very common. The thigh muscles tend to pull on the bone fragments, causing them to overlap and reunite incorrectly. Shortening Varus deformity, valgus deformity, and rotational malunion all occur often because the fracture may be unstable and collapse before it heals. This may not be as much of a concern in patients with limited independence and mobility. Hip fractures rarely result in neurological or vascular injury. Intracapsular fractures Trochanteric fracture Subtrochanteric fractures Deep or superficial wound infection has an approximate incidence of 2%. It is a serious problem as superficial infection may lead to deep infection. This may cause infection of the healing bone and contamination of the implants. It is difficult to eliminate infection in the presence of metal foreign bodies such as implants. Bacteria inside the implants are inaccessible to the body's defense system and to antibiotics. The management is to attempt to suppress the infection with drainage and antibiotics until the bone is healed. Then the implant should be removed, following which the infection may clear up. Implant failure may occur, the metal screws and plate can break, back out or cut out superiorly and enter the joint. This occurs either through inaccurate implant placement or if the fixation does not hold in weak and brittle bone. In the event of failure, the surgery may be redone, or changed to a total hip replacement. Malpositioning, the fracture can be fixed and subsequently heal in an incorrect position, especially rotation. This may not be a severe problem or may require subsequent osteotomy surgery for correction. Many people are unwell before breaking a hip, it is common for the break to have been caused by a fall due to some illness, especially in the elderly. Nevertheless, the stress of the injury, and a likely surgery, increases the risk of medical illness including heart attack, stroke, and chest infection. Hip fracture patients are at considerable risk for thromboimmobilism, blood clots that dislodge and travel in the bloodstream. Deep venous thrombosis is when the blood in the leg veins clots and causes pain and swelling. This is very common after hip fracture as the circulation is stagnant and the blood is hypercoagulable as a response to injury. DVT can occur without causing symptoms. A pulmonary embolism occurs when clotted blood from a DVT comes loose from the leg veins and passes up to the lungs. Circulation to parts of the lungs are cut off which can be very dangerous. Fatal PE may have an incidence of 2% after hip fracture and may contribute to illness and mortality in other cases. Mental confusion is extremely common following a hip fracture. It usually clears completely, but the disorienting experience of pain, immobility, loss of independence, moving to a strange place, surgery, and drugs combine to cause delirium or accentuate pre-existing dementia. Urinary tract infection can occur. Patients are immobilized and in bed for many days, they are frequently catheterist, commonly causing infection. 
prolonged immobilization and difficulty moving make it hard to avoid pressure sores on the sacrum and heels of patients with hip fractures. Whenever possible, early mobilization is advocated, otherwise, alternating pressure mattresses should be used. Hip fractures are very dangerous episodes especially for elderly and frail patients. The risk of dying from the stress of the surgery and the injury in the first 30 days is about 10%. At one year after fracture this may reach 30%. If the condition is untreated the pain and immobility imposed on the patient increase that risk. Problems such as pressure sores and chest infections are all increased by immobility. The prognosis of untreated hip fractures is very poor. Among those affected over the age of 65, 40% are transferred directly to long-term care facilities, long-term rehabilitation facilities, or nursing homes. Most of those affected require some sort of living assistance from family or home care providers. 50% permanently require walkers, canes, or crutches for mobility all require some sort of mobility assistance throughout the healing process. Among those affected over the age of 50, approximately 25% die within the next year due to complications such as blood clots, infections, and pneumonia. Patients with hip fractures are at high risk for future fractures including hip, wrist, shoulder, and spine. After treatment of the acute fracture, the risk of future fractures should be addressed. Currently, only one in four patients after a hip fracture receives treatment and work up for osteoporosis, the underlying cause of most of the fractures. Current treatment standards include the starting of a bisphosphonate to reduce future fracture risk by up to 50%. Hip fractures are seen globally and are a serious concern at the individual and population level. By 2050 it is estimated that there will be 6 million cases of hip fractures worldwide. One study published in 2001 found that in the U.S. alone, 310,000 individuals were hospitalized due to hip fractures which can account for 30% of Americans who were hospitalized that year. Another study found that in 2011, femur neck fractures were among the most expensive conditions seen in U.S. hospitals, with an aggregated cost of nearly $4.9 billion for 316,000 inpatient hospitalizations. Rates of hip fractures is declining in the United States, possibly due to increased use of bisphosphonates and risk management. Falling, poor vision, weight and height are all seen as risk factors. Falling is one of the most common risk factors for hip fractures. Approximately 90% of hip fractures are attributed to falls from standing height. Given the high morbidity and mortality associated with hip fractures and the cost to the health system in England and Wales, the National Hip Fracture Database is a mandatory nationwide audit of care and treatment of all hip fractures. All populations experience hip fractures but numbers vary with race, gender, and age. Women suffer three times as many hip fractures as men. In a lifetime, men have an estimated 6% risk whereas postmenopausal women have an estimated 14% risk of suffering a hip fracture. These statistics provide insight over a lifespan and conclude that women are twice as likely to suffer a hip fracture. The overwhelming majority of hip fractures occur in white individuals while blacks and Hispanics have a lower rate of them. This may be due to their generally greater bone density and also because whites have longer overall lifespan and higher likelihood of reaching an advanced age where the risk of breaking a hip goes up. Deprivation is also a key factor, 
in England it has been found that people in the poorest parts of the country are more likely to fracture a hip and less likely to recover well than those in the least deprived areas. Age is the most dominant factor in hip fracture injuries, with most cases occurring in people over 75. The increase of age is related to the increase of the incidence of hip fracture, which is the most frequent cause of hospitalization in centenarians, overcoming congestive heart failure and respiratory infection. Falls are the most common cause of hip fractures, around 30 to 60 percent of older adults fall each year. This increases the risk for hip fracture and leads to the increased risk of death in older individuals. The rate of one-year mortality is seen from 12 to 37 percent. For those remaining patients who do not suffer from mortality, half of them need assistance and cannot live independently. Also, older adults sustain hip fractures because of osteoporosis which is a degenerative disease due to age and decrease in bone mass. The average age for suffering a hip fracture is 77 years old for women and 72 years old for men. This shows how closely age is related to hip fractures. Rehabilitation Nutrition supplementation Complications Surgical Medical Prognosis Post-operation Epidemiology Population Age-related